Morgan with Foothill Sports Medicine Physical Therapy. We're here today at our Tempe Clinic to celebrate National Women's Health Week. I'm sitting here today with our therapist, Lindsay, who is actually our women's health specialist. Lindsay, would you like to tell us what National Women's Health Week means to you and what it means to be a women's health specialist? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> So during National Women's Health Week uh, this year, we like to take the opportunity to remind women that they should take their health as a priority. And what that means is that they should talk to their health care provider, they should get and stay active, they should eat a heart-healthy diet, they should take care of their mental health, find healthy ways to manage their stress, and practice good sleeping habits. Um, public health is such like a wide topic because it could include your pregnant women to your perimenopausal women and to your young athletes that could be suffering from incontinence, that could be suffering from painful intercourse, or even have just some sort of sexual dysfunction. And so a women's health physical therapist can help with that, definitely. So what does it mean and how does a woman know if she's suffering from pelvic health? It, can it be like something in your lower back could cause some pelvic pain? Mm -hmm. What do those kinds of symptoms look like? What I've learned from treatment is that I had a lot of women and even men that had chronic low back and hip pain that wasn't resolving and or I wasn't getting the results that I was really wanting. And they had similar presentation to other patients and I was just wondering what am I missing? Then I started to become curious about women's health physical therapy and I took courses and to me like you look at you know the abdominals, the low back, the hip, but often what we're missing is the pelvic floor muscles and breathing mechanics. So if you look at kind of the pelvic floor muscles and where they lay in the pelvis and how close they are to some of the muscles that we treat with the hip and low back, it's crazy how close they are and how well they work together. Some of the muscles in the low back and the pelvic floor even share the same nerve root supply. That's crazy. Insane. Yes. And a lot of times, like chronic low back pain, women have urinary incontinence and they would never think to make the correlation between the two. So what we do as pelvic floor physical therapist is find what's tight, strengthen what's weak, and restore that balance between the hip, the low back, and the pelvic floor. So you asked um, what are some of the symptoms? Um, it could be just general low back, it could be abdominal pain, it could be pelvic pain, it could be tailbone pain, it could be groin pain, it could be so many symptoms that you wouldn't think that pelvic floor is involved. So Lindsay, in the PT community, we hear a ton about lower back pain. So can you talk a little bit more about lower back pain, how it presents in women if they're having a pelvic floor dysfunction and kind of how your approach differs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, lower back pain in general is a common cause for visits to the doctor. They say at least 80% of Americans will have low back pain in their lifetime. So it's pretty common. Um, and low back pain could be cause of a sprain or strain from moving too quickly or it could be poor bottom mechanics when lifting something from the floor. I'm sure you've heard common diagnosis such as strains, disc injury, sciatica, stenosis. Um, for women, there can be a lot of underlying issues like endometriosis, pregnancy, um, uterine fibroids, or cancer. Um, and they estimate about 50% of women will suffer from some kind of low back pain either during pregnancy or postpartum. And it can affect women's life drastically because you know, it's the most common cause of sick pay leave after delivery. And luckily, physical therapy is the gold standard for conservative treatment. So usually, if I'm, like I said earlier, if I'm not finding the results that I want, I'll do women's health or look at more of that route. And it's different than other types of therapy because it typically requires more of a one-on-one -on -one private room approach. And so the examination process typically requires an internal examination which can be done vaginally or rectally, whichever is appropriate. And it's different than your normal gynecological yearly exam because you know, I don't use a speculum and it's often not painful at all. So while I'm doing it, I'm looking for tightness in the muscles, trigger points, painful areas, strength of the muscles down there so that I can, like everything else I treat, look at what's tight, loosen that up, look at what's weak, strengthen that, and look at the coordination and improve that. So that's how I take that approach and usually that helps resolve the remainder issues and gives that, my patient that long-term relief that they're looking for. It's such an interesting that you have this, this per new perspective on things that could be inhibiting women. So I know you mentioned 
pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about like, do you think every woman should come in pre, what during their pregnancy for lower back pain or even pelvic floor health? Or what about after pregnancy when they've given birth? Like, are there certain things that women should look out for that aren't normal? Yeah, so normally um, they say that if you had a normal vaginal delivery and a healthy uh, birthing process, then you normally can return to like exercise and everything like that fairly quickly. Um, if you had a C-section, they typically wait until six weeks to clear you, but if you're experiencing that pain, it's better to get in sooner rather than later, so you're, prolong you're preventing a prolonged injury, right? And so for women, it's important because especially when we give birth, we're often juggling many things. Not me, because I don't have a child, but you know, <laughs> postpartum women are often juggling many things and they also often forget that their health is the priority. They're the missing piece and that they should take care of themselves first so they can take care of their families. Yeah, so you're saying when women jump up and down, it's not normal to have incontinence and that they should no. seek physical therapy because that is a treatment that can help with that. Yes, which is crazy because there's so many ads out there for pads to help with that. And it's kind of like reinforcing that there isn't out anything out there to help that. So physical therapy, especially women's health, can help women know what's out there and what kind of aids there are and how they can do self-care to help with the healing process. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more about to me too, as our women's health specialist, you don't just specialize in the pelvic floor health. So talk to me about what injuries are most common for women, say they're starting a new workout program, like what injuries are women more susceptible um, when they're starting a new active lifestyle? It could be anything. It could be low back pain, it can be hip pain, it can be knee pain, it can be shoulder pain. And we uh, kind of often joke here, we have a therapist that uh, focuses a lot on glute strength. And glute strength and core strength kind of go hand in hand and that's kind of your foundation. If you don't have that, especially you know postpartum when you're returning to exercise pretty quickly, other things can arise like diastasis recti or the urinary incontinence. and so those are common things if you're returning to exercise too quickly and that's something that we can help with too. And you just said, di di say that again. Diastasis recti. What is that? Can you explain that to the community who may yeah. not know what that is or even what it looks like or feels like? Yeah, so generally it happens postpartum. I mean, it happens while you're during pregnancy. So you have hormones change the body and as the fetus is growing, your stomach expands and the linea alba is in between the rectus abdominis. So that tends to stretch out and not every woman after they get birth does it come back to its normal state. So you typically see it when you're trying to brace or lift up your head off the floor and you see this bulge or what we call doming. And so what we do is focus on improving function improving function of the abdominals and to the hips and the pelvic floor so you know how to brace properly under any sort of load so you can return to all activities running crossfit working out anything like that without that doming because i mean there's nothing it's just cosmetic people don't like what it looks like but it also could affect your ability to use your abdominals properly Whoa, okay, well that's good to know. I think we all learned something new here today. So if any of you out there are struggling with any of the conditions that Lindsay mentioned, please get on our website and um, call our phone number and get scheduled with her. She's at two of our East Valley locations and happy National Women's Week to everybody and have a great day and stay safe out there.